Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so that you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. Now let's get started. So today we're going to be dealing with calcium homeostasis. You know, everything about endocrine physiology is talking about how hormones help to regulate and coordinate the balance of various physiological variables that are important to maintain the life and the health of cells, of tissues, of organs, and of the body in general. Okay, so now why do, do, do we need to, to maintain calcium at a stable level? Because of how important calcium is to several important functions of the body. That's why a hormone, in fact, not just one hormone, three different kinds of hormones are dedicated in regulating the balance of calcium. Okay, so now why is calcium so important? Do you know that calcium is involved? in muscular contraction remember sarcoplasmic reticulum releases calcium that now helps to bind to troponin c and activates that contractile process so without calcium the muscles cannot function well contract okay so when there's something like hypocalcemia very reduced calcium it can affect the functioning of muscles then you have laryngeal spasms that can make you unable to breathe and you can die from there Okay, even the heart muscles it affects it when there's hyper, this starts hypercalcemia, it can result in arrhythmias, cardiac arrhythmias that can stop the heart and you can the person can die from there. So that's why calcium is very important. Apart from muscular contraction, you no know, calcium is also involved in blood clotting, it's also used as a second messenger. So, so many, so many important functions. That's why we need calcium and regulated in the ex extracellular fluid okay but funny enough do you know that the calcium total calcium in the body the part that does all this function is the one in the extracellular and it makes just one percent of total body calcium then 99 percent is now found where this one is found in extracellular fluid that perform all these functions we are talking about even the secretion of uh, neurotransmitters they need calcium for exocytosis to occur this 99 percent is found in bones and what teeth they are loaded with bones so it's a store of calcium the bones and the teeth but when we are talking of calcium homeostasis, it's usually the bones. That's where sometimes the body will need to get some calcium from, from in case there's depletion in the extracellular fluid, which helps to regulate all those things that I've just mentioned, all those functions. Okay, so now in the regulation of calcium levels, there are three different hormones. Let me mention them. You have one, the parathyroid, which will be our focus in this part one. Parathyroid hormone, we usually just refer to parat hormone for short. Number two, you have vitamin D, activated vitamin D. Vitamin D, why, how come a vitamin is now doing like a hormone? Activated the form of it the number three you have another one called calcitonin okay so these three hormones are involved in calcium homeostasis regulating the levels of calcium and there are three sites that are also very important in calcium homeostasis one of them is intestines or intestines number two the bones like we have mentioned and number three the kidneys 
So when you're talking of, you must, these three things. Now, why these three sites? Okay? It's because the intestine, GIT, that's where you take in resources. Okay? You take in calcium from your food. Intake. So this one is about intake. Okay? Then this one, storage of calcium. 99% of it. So this one is involved in storage. Then this one, mainly excretion determines how much calcium you can excrete through the kidneys. Excretion. This one deals with excretion, which will now affect the levels. If it's, you have a lot, too much calcium, you might need to excrete more from the kidney. If you have less, the, body, the kidney might need to reduce its excretion. So these are the three things, interplay of these three sites and an interplay of three hormones. Three sites, three hormones, right? So that is way of introduction. So we've talked about these three sites and bones making 99%. We need to know something about this bone. Okay, it will help us to understand the functions of parathyroid hormone. So let's just give a little insight to the physiology of bone, anatomy, physiology of bone. Now the bones they are made up of cells. The bone is a living tissue. Okay, just you see it very hard like that. It's living. Okay, it has three types of cells. One, osteoblast. Osteo bone, osteoblast, yeah, maturing cells, um, bone cells. Osteoblast, you have osteocytes and you have osteoclasts. Okay, you have these three types of cells. And what do they do? Now, the bone, as you see it, is just made up of these three cells surrounded by a matrix of collagen then now embedded with calcium and phosphate you see that so you have cells and this that the collagen mm, that forms a matrix like a supporting structure around all these cells is secreted by this osteoblast it secretes collagen which is a protein okay collagen is a protein very connective tissue protein, strong, tough protein. So those that secrete collagen, which we call osteoid, okay? Osteoid, osteoid. Then what happens? Then there's now a structure for minerals to now fill in, okay? So calcium and phosphate now start filling themselves in that structure of that matrix, the osteoid formed by collagen. So it's called mineralization. So calcium and phosphate together form a, a, a chemical compound called hydroxyapatite. I'm sure you've heard it before. Hydroxyapatite. Okay, so that's, that's just it. So when they are mineralized, this osteoblast now mature and become osteocytes. Okay, then osteoclasts itself, they are the kind, the cells that are involved in demineralization of the bones. In other words, they help to remove calcium and phosphate and even eat up some of this collagen and take it into the blood. You see that? So they have this like destructive function of the bone. They remove from the bone. This osteoblast adds, it adds to the bone. But this one removes, you understand? So these ones, they are multinucleated cells. Very, very important cells. They, they play, because they are removing, doesn't mean they are negative. They, because sometimes you need to in favor of the ECF calcium. Sometimes you need to take away from the bone. And it's this one that needs to take away some calcium away from the bone, okay? It does that by secreting hydrogen ions that will do what? That will dissolve 
the minerals, calcium and phosphate. Then it now secretes hydrolytic enzymes that will break down collagen. Okay, because it doesn't break down collagen, it will be difficult to dissolve that. So, hydrolytic enzyme breaking down collagen, which is a protein, then hydrogen ions to dissolve the minerals, hydrogen appetite, and then calcium is free to go back into the blood. So, this is what you need to know about the bone. All right, so we will now be going into the parathyroid hormone itself and its physiological functions. Don't go anywhere after this break. All right, you're welcome back. Now, we're going to be talking about parathyroid hormone itself. So, parathyroid hormone is secreted from the parathyroid gland and from the name parathyroid. So, it's actually located at the posterior part of the thyroid gland in the neck. Okay, the thyroid gland has this butterfly, butterfly-like shape something like this okay the thyroid gland then at the posterior part you now have four small 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 things here so you have four parathyroid gland look at the posterior part like this okay and there are two types of cells now look at the parathyroid gland one of them is called oxyphil cells Oxyphil cells, and now one is called chief cells. Nobody knows what this one actually does. So it's actually these chief cells that secrete parat hormone or parathyroid hormone. Okay, so as you already know, the parathyroid gland is secretes a peptide hormone. So parathyroid hormone is a peptide hormone about 84 amino acids, straight chain minus a peptide hormone so that means its receptors are what located at the plasma membranes now for you to really understand how parathyroid hormone functions you need to know what it really does in this those three sites i mentioned the intestine the bone and then the kidneys that's where they really function no other place those three sites to help to regulate the levels and the function mainly is just to increase the levels the ecf level okay of calcium the calcium in the blood that is what it's concerned about so straight to the point when for example there's increased levels of calcium what do you think will happen that means parathyroid hormone doesn't need to be secreted now because it's already high. So the way it happens is that parathyroid glands, these cells, they have a calcium sensing. They, scan, they can sense calcium. Okay? There's calcium sensing cells. But when there's increased calcium, it binds and then it activates that G protein through the phospholipid C mechanism and then IP3, okay, IP3 slash calcium is produced, inositol triphosphate, and so on. So this now acts as the second messenger that goes to now inhibit, now inhibits the secretion of parathyroid hormone from these cells. And when parathyroid hormone is inhibited, the levels of calcium can no longer increase. In fact, it begins to reduce. So that's basically it. So now let's now go straight and see how parathyroid hormone acts on those three sites. Now, number one, in the bones, it increases osteoclastic activity. That means osteoclastic activity breaking down the minerals, that's calcium and phosphate, and start releasing them into the blood. By so doing, it raises calcium levels okay so in the for the bones increases osteoclastic activity 
okay then for the intestines it has somewhat of an indirect way it acts on the intestine it uses vitamin d but the way it does is that it promotes the formation of vitamin d so vitamin d will now is the one that will now goes to increase the absorption of calcium in the intestine do you understand so it promotes promotes formation of vitamin d then number three in the kidneys it promotes the reabsorption of calcium when calcium is filtered in the kidney it promotes more of it to be reabsorbed to go into the ecf that's when calcium levels are low parathyroid is secreted it increases reabsorption okay so it increases re reabsorption of calcium in kidneys but unfortunately number four is that it now increases loss of phosphate okay so in the bone it increases acoustical activity that releases calcium and phosphate here absorption of and so on but in the kidney increases reabsorption but increases loss of phosphate so that there will be balance okay it prefers more of calcium so where why it supports it here it negates it here so that there will be balance think the body knows what it's doing okay so that's just basically what it is so the regulation is just through normal negative feedback okay so when it's high calcium there is now inhibition of the release of parathyroid hormone so when there is now low calcium this thing can no longer inhibit it so there is now promotion or stimulation of the parathyroid gland to release parathyroid hormone that now raises up through these mechanisms so you see how it is very easy so in the part two we are going to be learning about calcitonin and vitamin d what roles do they play and also one or two disorders what are the consequences of hyper and hypo okay so we're going to see you in the next video